artists, I'm Miss Misha, and today we're doing a lesson called the Modern Landscape Drawing Lesson. Now all you need for this lesson is a pencil, some paper, an eraser, and some colored pencils, crayons, or markers. It's up to you what you have around your house. To start with, we're going to lay our paper down in a portrait direction. That's vertically, up and down. The first thing we're going to do is make a border about one inch in from the edges of our paper. So one inch kind of is about the size of the tip of your finger, the first part of your finger here. You can use a ruler if you have one, but you don't need one for this. Sometimes a freehand drawn border with a little bit of a wiggly line is more fun than a really straight one. Take your time, go slowly all around the edge of your paper. And you can turn your paper a little bit to make it easier. There we go, I have my border or my frame in. Now it's your turn. next thing we're going to do is divide our paper into three parts. We're going to have the foreground and the midground lines drawn in so that there are three parts of our paper, a bottom, a middle, and a top. You can use a ruler for this or just do it freehand or eyeball it. I like to use something that I have on hand, like my hand. If I use my fist, I can get about three fists in my paper. And that, that way I know where to put my dots to divide my paper into thirds. If you have a crayon, you can use that, or maybe a small pencil. Once you have your paper divided into thirds with dots, you're gonna take your pencil and very, very lightly make a line across horizontally, connecting your dots and going all the way across your paper. These lines are going to show you where your foreground is and your middle ground is. Now the next thing we're going to do is lay in our landscape. We're going to have some hills in the foreground and some mountains in the background or the middle ground here. Watch me do it and then you can have a turn to do it yourselves. I'm gonna start a little bit lower than my bottom line and make some nice curved hills. I'm gonna start with one. Make another one behind it. And I'll make another one behind that. So I'll have three. You can make about two or three. Now behind these, we're gonna have some mountains. I'm also gonna make three mountains. These will start right in the middle of the paper and go up to touch that second line all the way down. The mountains are a lot taller than your hills. And maybe I'll put one more little one right back in here. Doop. I'll continue out that side. There we go. So now we have our hills in our foreground, our mountains in our middle ground, and then we have our background, which will be our sky. Take your eraser and erase those light lines that we drew in. Now it's your turn. 
get your hills and your mountains drawn in. Now that we have our foreground and our middle ground all drawn in, we're going to do our background. We're going to make a nice round moon shape. You can either do it in the middle of your paper or choose a side, the right or the left, to put it. I'm going to do mine up on the left side. I'm going to make a nice round full moon. Make sure not to make it too big or too small. Now around this moon, you're going to put some concentric circles. Concentric circles, that's just a fancy way, way of saying one circle inside the next. So we have our middle circle, which is our moon, and then we're gonna have circles going all the way around, radiating out into our skyscape. And filling up that background with some beautiful moonlight. When you get down into your hills and your mountains, you might need to stop because your concentric circles need to go behind your mountains. And then think about where it's going to end up. So it will go right here. If you need to, you can draw over your mountains lightly and then go back in after and erase the lines that go over your mountains if that's easier for you. Don't forget this one. I went out of my frame a little bit, so I'm gonna fix that up. Perfect. Now it's your turn. Get some beautiful concentric circles drawn into your skyscape. Awesome. Now we are ready for some color. We're going to get out all of our colors that we have and we're going to divide them up into cool and warm colors. So cool colors are colors like blues and purples and there's greens. I would put these greens in the cool colors as well. My warm colors would be more colors like orange, yellow, and red. Now this landscape is going to be a nighttime landscape with the moon in the sky. So I'm going to make my sky with cool colors and color in my landscape with the warm colors. When you color in your hills and your mountains, Make sure that you're alternating colors between each one. This will create more interest in your shapes and your landscape. Remember, you can put your pencil sideways to get a bigger, broader coloring stroke. Switch to another color. Using that side of my pencil, I can fill in that area rather quickly. Just make sure to be careful right along your edges and maybe switch to using the point of your pencil for your edges. You can do the same thing with markers or crayons. You can use the point and the edge.
I'm going to switch to yellow up here so that I don't have two of the same colors right next to each other. One more little space to color up here. And then I can switch over to my sky. There we go. All right, for your skyscape, you're going to switch to your cool colors. Start in the middle with your moon. Choose what color you want to make your moon. And then decide, do you want to use all these colors or maybe just choose two or three? I'm going to just choose two, I think. I'm going to do a light blue and a dark blue and just alternate them. This is kind of a purple blue, actually. So then I would go back and forth doing a light blue circle and then this dark purple blue circle. And do them over and over again until I fill in my whole background. Make sure to leave your border all the way around Try not to get color in that border. And that will be a beautiful frame. Now one thing you can do if you have a pen, a black pen or a Sharpie marker, you can go over all of your lines when you're done. And this will really make your landscape pop. Make sure to go very slowly and follow those lines. And don't forget to outline your frame, even with all its bumps. And if you don't get a perfect tracing job, that's okay. okay. Here's another finished one with all the tracing done. Look how beautiful it is. It almost looks like it's uh, from Arizona with all these peaks or maybe on another planet. One thing you can do with this project is you can switch your colors. Once you're done doing a nightscape with a warm sky, a warm foreground and a cool sky, you can switch it up and make a warm sky and a cool foreground. Maybe it's a sunshine shining on a landscape. You could also add some trees to your foreground or maybe a little river. It's up to you. So get creative and have fun, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.